All right, hello everyone and welcome to Walkthrough 7, CS50 Finance. Now we are officially done with all of the CEP sets in CS50 and we're just left with one more, which is going to be a fun implementation of a website where users can log into CS50 Finance and buy and sell stocks. So today we are going to have a few tools at our disposal. We're going to be talking about permissions. So whenever you have a web folder, then you're going to want to allow users to you know, execute certain files, but also just read other ones. So we'll look into permissions and how you can set those. Then we're going to look into PHP, HTML, and SQL code. So first, permissions. When you're in the terminal um, in a certain directory, then what you want to do is you want to run the uh, chmod command. And so that's followed by either letters or numbers co corresponding to what you want um, basically the world to see, you, you yourself to see, etc. So for instance, whenever you have a folder, then you want that folder to be executable by everyone that sees it. So what you would do, you could run the command chmod a plus x and then the name of your folder. Um, when you have when you have a file such as CSS files or image, you know, image files like JPEGs and bitmaps, things like that, or any JavaScript code, you want that to be um, readable by everyone. Um, so then what you do is you can use the wildcard, which is an asterisk, so basically indicate in the CSS folder, everything in that folder, I'm going to say that that's going to be readable by everyone. Now with permissions, what uh, when we use the letters that those are also we can also use numbers instead and so you see that ultimately when you want something to be executable that's represented by the number one the something to be readable is the number is the number four and then um, oh, writable is number two and so essentially when you want a combination of those then you add them so if you want something to be readable writable and executable then you would add up for four, two, and one, and that would give you seven. And so then whenever you have a folder, you want that to be executable by everyone, as well as readable and writable, you make that seven, one, you make that seven, one, one. So that would be seven for you, and then one for the other people. And when you have the spec, it'll actually specify which, which folders and which files need to be chmodded um, specifically. For instance, when you have folders, those are 711. When you have images or um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then those are going to be 604 or 6, 644. And then PHP files, those are going to be 600. Um, the idea behind that is that users shouldn't actually see your PHP code, but just be able to see the output. Great. So moving into PHP, um, essentially whenever you want a PHP file, then you the um, the the file the file suffix is .php. You can also mix HTML with PHP code, and so if you have an HTML file, for instance, then you can just um, enclose it with like the with the um, left angle question mark PHP. Put your PHP code, and then close that. Um, with a another question mark and a right angle. Variables in PHP are a lot easier to deal with than variables in C. So any variable just starts with a dollar sign in front of it, and they're weakly typed. That means that you don't need to worry about setting something equal to a string or an integer. You can just simply say, "This is my name of the variable, and then this is, um, and then this is its value." So it's going to be um, it's going to be easier to deal with there. Another thing is that PHP allows you to use associative arrays. So you can just simply define an array like you would in C by saying, um, you know, dollar sign, the name of your array equals, and then in square brackets have basically just the list of, the list of values in the, all of the elements in the array. But in PHP, what you can also do is specify basically the, um, it's kind of like it's kind of like a hash function, right? So you can specify the the index, what you're going to call it, and then that corresponds to a value. So if you actually pass in, you know, a a equals one, b equals two, c equals three, then your array at index a would give you one. All right. 
So this P set will warm you up with some PHP in a section of questions, and then we dive into CS50 Finance. And so we have a couple of, we have some functionality basically to, um, to implement in this website. We want to allow users to register in our website with a username and a password. We want to allow them to look up a quote, and then we would, we would basically print out the name of that quote as well as the current price that it's at. We want to allow them to sh uh, allow them to see a portfolio, basically, of all of the shares that ha they have bought thus far. Then we also want to allow them to buy to buy stocks as well as sell them. And then finally, we want to be allow, allow them to see the history of all of the transactions that they've made. And then finally, after you've implemented all of that, then you're free to implement one extra feature. And so we'll go into those. Those can be um, either allowing users to like get extra cash by depositing extra cash, or they could you could allow them to change their password or something like that, email them when they buy a when they buy email them a receipt when they buy or sell a stock. So there's a a, a limited list of features that you could implement yourself. Um, so that's the last one there. Since this is a website, then you guys also have a lot of freedom to customize it. So we do provide, um, like, a, we do provide some CSS code, and but you're definitely free to kind of tweak it and you know make it look nicer. But underlying it is a basic functionality. So always refer to the spec about what you actually need to include there. All right. So following the spec, basically, we're going to be using um, using the appliance as also a server. So it's going to be like hosting um, our website for us on its local server. So if you follow these instructions and unzip your the PSET 7 distribution code into your um, v virtual host slash local host folder, then you can just visit local um, HTTP localhost in your in like Google Chrome and the appliance. And then you would reach the code in which you've written for PSET 7. All right, so PSET 7 comes with a bunch of distribution code, and hopefully we've, um, you know, through all of the PSETs before this, kind of accustomed us to reading through piece, uh, distribution code, kind of understanding what functions are already provided and how we might be able to use those and the other functions that we're going to be implementing. So in this case, we have three folders. We have an HTML folder, an includes folder, and then a templates folder. What we're going to be doing with this P set is kind of separating the like the thinking and the programming thinking um, of the PHP code with the actual visual aspect. So we'll have one PHP file that does all the thinking and you know. Um, reads into the database, prints out things, has if t statements, things like that, and then that'll pass basically finished data into our template file, our template PHP file, and so then what that will do is kind of read the data and it'll print it out. But we can kind of treat templates as like dumb in that we don't really want to, them to be doing a lot of work in calculating things. We want our we want our controllers to do that. So a little bit on that, let's take a look at some of the distribution code. So here we have our index.html file. It's pretty empty. Essentially what it does, it says, well, I'm going to require the configuration.php file. So we don't have, we don't see that right there, but it's going to be basically like calling the configuration.php file, um, executing that. Then after it does that, it's going to render the portfolio. So rendering is a function. So basically whenever we're in a controller, we'll call render. We'll give it the, we'll give it the file and then basically the data that we're passing in. So then when, so that it'll call in portfolio.php, kind of pass in that data so that portfolio can, um, can deal with that. All right, and now here we have our login.php form, and so this is the uh, controller that basically takes care of the, the, the logging in. So here, it basically checks if a form was submit submitted to, to this file and kind of deals with validating this, the, the submission. We'll look into this apologize function, essentially, when we want to print out an error message, we use apologize, and so that'll redirect the user to a specific page that will print out the specific error message that we indicate. Continuing on, it'll query the database. We'll get into more of that later. And then you see that down here, 
if a form wasn't submitted, then it renders a form. So basically that means that it um, goes to loginform.php. So let's look at that. And so login.php is actually where we see the HTML dealing with the actual visual aspect. So here we have an input tags that me, uh, for the username, an input for the password, as well as a submit button. So that's actually where the visual aspect and the, H the HTML form is going to be held. See that here it says that it's going to be submitted by a certain method called post. We'll get into differ the differences between methods you know, post versus get. There's also something called put. We'll get into those methods later. But for the interest of this piece, I would highly encourage you to use post. So then we know that basically once this form is submitted from loginform.php, then it will go to the action, so login.php, basically pass in all of those parameters from those forms into login.php. And then the results from that form are contained within this post associative array. And the basically indexes of the different elements in the post array are exactly the, what you specify here. You say that the name of this input is username, name of this one is password. Similarly, you see the username as the index of the associative array there. Then if we go to the includes folder, then we have this functions file, which is going to be very useful. So all of these functions are implemented for you. You don't need to like specifically implement any of these yourself, but they're going to be quite useful. So we have apologize, which as I said before, will basically print out an error message for you on a specific page, apology.php. Then we have dump. So basically, if you just pass, it, if you just call dump and then pass in the variable, then it'll bring you to a page that will just display that variable for you. Then we have logout, which will basically end a certain user's session. Lookup is going to be useful. So since we're dealing with quotes and stocks, we're actually going to be able to, we, and it's essentially real time, we need to know right, what those stock values are. So we have the lookup function that basically deals with Yahoo's um, um, documentation of stocks. And so once you look up a certain symbol of a stock, then it'll return to you the stock symbol as well as the name and the current price of that stock. So that's the lookup function. Then we're dealing with um, then we're dealing with MySQL, so we're going to be wanting to to execute certain queries on our SQL database. So we have query to deal um, to kind of abstract some of that out. So we're going to be passing in basically the whole string of our SQL query and all of the variables that go in it. And what this does is it'll actually execute that for us. So instead of having to um, write all of this out every time that you want to query, you know, um, by, by you know, getting all of the results from that query, then you can just call the query function and it'll return to you, an, depending on what you're using for your query, either like probably a row of all of the results that match the query or similar. More on that later though. Finally, we have, re we, then we have redirect, which as, the name suggests redirects you to a different page. And then render, which we're going to be calling um, a couple of times. Basically, when you're in a controller, you call render into the template page and then pass in the values that the template will then deal with. And so those values are probably going to be dealing with the type of output that you want to be shown on your template page. Okay. So those are the functions, and there are more. Th there is a lot more to this distribution code, so I encourage you um, to go through this and explore it yourself. Also, the spec will probably walk you through some other elements of the distribution code. Again, here a summary of the functions found in functions.php. Okay. So the first task is to allow users to register on the website. Right now, there is a login form on the website, and there you've, you're provided with basically a few users um, with passwords. So you can use those usernames and log in, but you want to allow people to make their own usernames and add themselves to the website. So 
the, the layout for registration is pretty similar to the login form, except the username isn't pre-existing and the user also needs to provide a new password and then typically we have a password confirmation. And so then basically once the user inputs all of that information, we want to add them basically to our database of users. We're going to have a database, um, a SQL database that we're going to reference and so then in that database we'll have a table basically with all of the users containing their username, their password, and also how much cash they have. All right, so in register, we want to basically allow them to enter that information. We want to display that form. Then we want to make sure that their password, that they entered one, and then also that the passwords match when they enter it twice. Then after all of that is done, assuming that that, um, that is all, both errors are checked, then we want to add those users to our database. Then finally, once you've registered, then it's pretty convenient if you don't need to log in again once you've registered. So we're also going to log them in to the website if they've registered successfully. So the first task is to display the form. And this is actually going to be, this whole registration process is going to be modeled pretty closely after login, except instead of login.php, you might have register.php. And then instead of login form, which is the template, you'll have register form. And so you'll want to add one more field, a password confirmation field, instead of just the one username and the one password. Then next we want to check whether the passwords um, match or are blank or not. And so then we have the controller register register.php, which is going to take care um, of basically doing these checks. So when a form is submitted via the post method, then everything, all of those variables are contained within the post array. So then you want to make sure that the post um, array of pass value at index password matches the element at of co the confirmation element. So you want to make sure that they aren't blank, and then you want to make sure that they're the same. One convenient thing of PHP is that we don't need to use string compare anymore. We can just use the equals equals operator to check whether strings are equal to one another. And then for error handling, you'll want to apologize. So to apologize, you just simply call the function and then specify a type of message that you want to output. Then you want to add the user to the database. Up until now, all we've do, been doing is just dealing locally with the, with the results of the form, but then now we actually want to add them to our database. So for this, um, we want to, well, first make sure that the username isn't blank, and then also understand that on a website, you can't have multiple users with the same username. So you'll want to make sure that when you insert something into your database, insert a new user, then you don't get kind of a collision between a pre-existing username and the username that a user is trying to submit. So for this, once you execute a query, insert, you know, in inserting a certain user with their password and initial amount of cash, then once you call that query, then MySQL will actually return false if it fails. Because the structure of users is such that the, the username is a unique value, so you can't have more than one. So when you try and insert a new row with a, with, with a username that already exists, then that's going to return false, kind of like a Boolean value false. Tricky thing here is that you'll want to check if the Basically, if result is the result of your query, if it, um, if it fails, then you'll want to check with the triple equals operator because that's actually going to check whether there is a failure or not, whereas in just a simple equals equals would, kind of ret would be true if, it, if the row was empty. But the result of a failure, if there's a collision between usernames, is the actual false value. Okay, and then here's how you would insert into a database. Here's the query that you would run strictly in SQL. One thing is that you can actually log, you can actually go to the website that manages your SQL database and play around there by actually entering manu manually either values and rows and then kind of it'll output actually what the SQL output is. You can also run SQL 
commands within your database and then see um, and then see basically what the syntax might be and then translate that into the query function that we have in pset 7 which is going to be very similar to the queries that you actually run so if I wanted to insert a new row into my users table then I would um, specify will insert into users which is the name of my table then I would specify basically the column the column names then I would actually provide the values along with my password. Now passwords in our users table aren't stored as just the string, they're actually stored as the encrypted version, so you'll want to run the function crypt on the actual password and that will give you the correct um, type of storage for, for the users array. And so running this will insert a new row into your users table. So to deal with the query function, before in C we use like the percent sign as a placeholder. Similarly, same va same concept of a placeholder applies here. So with query, you you specify the whole query. Except whenever you're dealing with variables as your input into the query, then instead of actually putting them inside, kind of like when we had printf statements in C, we would put the string and have a placeholder there, and then after each comma, basically specify which variable we had. So here we're going to Use, uh, use the question mark sign as our placeholder and then pass in each variable um, respectively in order for the, for the placeholders where those variables should go. So then here in the first, the first question mark would be replaced by the actual username and then the second question, question mark by the password. All right, so then finally, once you've registered them and added them to the database, then you want to log them in to the website. And so we have a kind of super global variable called session. And so session basically takes a certain ID and that ID corresponds to the user that's currently logged in. So then what you'll want to do is you'll want to find what their user ID is and then set that session ID as um, as that, as that particular user's ID. So a function that you'll want to use here in, is a SQL command that will basically uh, retrieve the last inserted ID number from your table. And so then rows will, it'll call the ID, it, in, it'll assign a name to the number that it returns, it'll call that ID. Okay, so now we've finished register and then we can move on to quote, allowing a user to input the name of a certain stock and then it'll return the, uh, the qualities of that stock. So what you'll want to do here is you want to have, again, a controller and some templates. In this case, we're going to have the controller, right, which is going to do all of the thinking for us. It's going to look up the symbol, and then pass in as va pass in values to the templates that will print out. So we're going to have two templates here, right? We're going to have one template that actually provides the form in which users are going to input the name of the stock, the name of the share. And then we're also going to want another template that actually displays those values. So um, you can you can look into login for an example of how you would you how you'd have a have a form that accepts input, except in here we only want one field, right? We don't want a username and a password field. We just want one field, one text field that allows a user to input the name of a certain stock. And so then you want to send that data um, once you have looked up that stock to quoteform.php. So lookup will return the symbol of a stock, the name, and a price. And those are contained within an associative array. And so look at the lookup function inside functions.php for more um, information on the return types of those. Great, and so then finally you'll want to display the stock information. And so then you want to probably dis um, access, you want to access those variables. So then once you have the price in a variable, then you'll want, um, as well as the name and the symbol, then you want to display those in your, like, in, in your template page. So that template page could be called like showquote.php or something. And so basically your quote.php page would render showquote 
and then pass in all of those values. And so then in your PHP page to actually like print out those values to the HTML um, aspect of the page, you just use the print function and um, pass, in, pass in the price. And so there are two ways you can either concatenate it with the dot operator or use a placeholder. Okay, so then the users eventually are going to be buying and selling stocks. So we want to allow them some way of basically seeing all of the stocks that they currently have. And so we're gonna call that their portfolio. And so portfolio would presumably for every user contain a bunch of rows basically listing the type of share that they have and then how many of those they have. Now our existing table right now, we have a users table in our database, and so that contains a user's username as well as their password and how much cash they have. But how do we, but there's no real way of like storing all of their stocks within that, right? Because it's not like we can insert a new, new we can't insert new columns for every stock because that would be a very, very long row because we have, um, we have there's an infinite quantity of, of types of stocks that they could have. So instead, what we'll do is within the same database, we'll have a user's data, well, you have a user's table, but then we'll also have a portfolio table. So a portfolio table will be definitely linked to the user's table, but instead the portfolio table structure will have, the, have basically the stock information as well as how many shares of that stock a user has, as well as a user's particular ID number. So you have the users table, which has an ID as well as the username, the hash, which is the password, the encrypted, pa encrypted password, and then the amount of cash they have. And so then the ID number would be linked to the ID number from the portfolio. And the portfolio would just have the symbol of the stock as well as the shares, the number of shares of that stock that the user has. And so in that portfolio table, you would have basically all shares possessed by any of all of the users on your site. But then later on to specify only a certain user's shares, all, only their portfolio, basically you would retrieve the values from your portfolios table such that the ID number is specific to that, that user. So then when you display the portfolio, then you'll want to report basically each of the stocks in a user's portfolio. You want to report the number of shares and then the current value of those shares. Now that current value of those shares isn't stored in the portfolio table because that's actually going to, that's going to be updating you know, at minimum every day by Yahoo. So to get that information, you can't actually um, reference, reference that from your SQL query, but what function provides that to us? What function will get the price? Well, that's lookup. So then using lookup on a particular symbol will, will give you a lot of information, but then uh, it'll give you three pieces of information, the name, the symbol, as well as the price. So then once you look up a certain symbol, then you can get the price, and then you can use the price to be displayed in your portfolio. And the portfolio should also display the user's current cash balance, and that field is stored within your users table. So then remembering how we're basically having two, like we're having like different types of PHP files. We're gonna have a controller, which basically does all the thinking for you, and then we have a template in which the template basically deals with outputting data. So you have to think of what variables the controller will need to take in, right? So if we're dealing with a portfolio here, which outputs the outputs every name, symbol, and share number, as well as current price of a stock, then you'll want to find some way of basically passing in, you can pass in an array of values that match that. So here, let's go into an example of how you might retrieve the, um, basically all of the the stocks owned by a particular user. This isn't dealing yet with the price of the stock, 
but what this would do is this would run a query it would it would obtain the symbol as well as the shares from um, I'm calling this table but in this case what would it be what's the name of the table that we're dealing with that has the symbol and shares for a particular user it's either users or portfolio portfolio yeah so um, what this would do is it would query portfolio for the symbol and shares for a particular user. So here I say select the symbol comma shares from table, but instead of table, you're going to replace that with portfolio. Then where is basically my condition. I'm saying, well, I only want to get those, that, the, that, or those associative arrays that correspond to this following condition. ID equals, and then I'm putting a placeholder there, and then session ID. And then what this would do, it would say, so for each row in rows. So this is a neat way, instead of actually having to set up a for loop that iterates over like all of the indexes, then in PHP, you can have a for each loop. So if you have a given array, then you can basically say, OK, um, I'm going to call every successive element in this, I'm going to call every element um, this name. And so for each one of these elements, and I'm going to call them this, then I can do this. So basically, um, in this for each, you have rows as your actual array. And so then each row, you're just going to call row. And so then every time that it executes the body, it'll go up, and it'll update row to the next element in rows. OK, so now in terms of buying stocks, what we want to do is we want to get the stock that the user wants to buy and the amount of shares that that user wants to buy. And then if they want, add that stock to their portfolio. And then obviously, if they're buying something, then that's going to decrease the amount of money they have. So that's going to decrease their cash. So we're going to be dealing with updating the portfolio as well as the user's table, right, which contains the cash. But first, you need to get the actual stock and amount of shares that the user wants. So for that, you'll need an HTML form that will ask for the symbol of the, sh the stock that you want to buy, as well as the number of shares. And then you'll want to add, um, you'll want to um, select basically certain values. So we've gone through this a little bit already, but basically with when you're trying to obtain certain rows, retrieve certain rows from a SQL table, then this is the following syntax. You have select, and then the, if you specify a star, that'll basically return the whole entire row for you. And then again, you have the condition where, and then you specify, okay, well, I only want the username to be equal to mailin, so it'll only retrieve the row in users that corresponds to Malin. All right. So when a user wants to add a share to a portfolio, you need to check for a few errors, right? You want to make sure that the user can actually afford the stock. So you want to check their cash. So before, we used star to just retrieve a whole row from a SQL table. But here, we can actually just specify, well, I only want one value. I only want cash. So here, it would return what um, return the cash for the user with ID number one. Then if, you, if a user all has already bought a certain stock, but then buys another, um, buys more of that stock, then in your portfolio, you don't want a separate line, another row that contains, like, that, contains that new tra transaction. You actually want to update the amount, uh, all that's changing really is the amount of shares that that user owns. So then if you s use the insert into query, so just insert into your portfolio all of these values, the user's ID number as well as the symbol of the stock that they're buying and the shares, then you'll also want to specify, well, if I run into a duplicate key, and so in this case, the duplicate key is not only the user's ID, but also the stock symbol, right? Because you can only have, our premise is that you can only have a row, one row that corresponds to one specific symbol. So on a duplicate um, key, if you run into a collision there, then you're going to just update shares to, um, to its new value. So shares equals whatever we had before, plus the number of shares that the user is buying again. 
All right, so now that we've updated the portfolio table, then we'll want to update the, ca the, ca the user's cash, right? So that's in the user's table. And so basically, we're going to be subtracting a certain amount from cash. So it presumably be, it's going to be cash equals cash minus and then a certain amount. To update the cash, then you would, ex you know, if I wanted to take away money from Mailin, then I would run this query, update users, and then set cash, the cash column to cash. Um, I would remove $9,999 only if the username is equal to Mailin. But in this case, we don't want to subtract $9,999 specifically. We want to specify, well, we just want to subtract the current price of the stock multiplied by the number of shares that they're buying. Okay, so now we've allowed them to see all of the stocks that they have, as well as buy more stocks, and then we, also, we have also previously allowed them to look up the current price of a stock. So here we want to allow them to, to sell them. So first we want to display, basically, we want to allow them to see all of the stocks that they have. So here we want to um, basically display all of the rows from the portfolio. If they choose to sell a certain stock, then we're going to assume that they want to sell all of it. So we, they, are, they aren't just going to sell 50% of their shares, they're going to sell whole 100% of it. So we can just delete the entire row from portfolio. We can delete um, basically the given user, the given user's shares of the certain symbol. So that's the syntax for that there. And then we want to update the cash, right? We're going to be adding in the cash equal to the amount of how many shares they are selling multiplied by the current price of the stock, right? Not the price at which they bought it, but rather the price at which they are, um, the current price when they're selling it, right? So to reference the current price of a stock, then you'll want to use lookup, right? Which will give you the price of a stock at the current time. Great. So now we are left with history, which basically want to allow a user to keep track of all of their transactions. Wants to see whenever they sold something, whenever they bought a stock. We want to specify the like, like the time at which they did that, as well as how many they bought and what um, and what stock it was. So do we have any current existing structure that kind of specifies that? Well, we have portfolio, which kind of di which displays the number of which displays the number of stocks that a user has for a given share. But we're structuring portfolio in the way that it only it updates when we buy multiple. Whereas history should, if you buy Apple 10 shares of it and then later on sell five, then you would want to see those separately as kind of separate actions, separate rows. Whereas that action to visualize that in our portfolio table would just be an update to that particular row. So we're probably going to want another table. So now in, in our database, we have our users table, we have our portfolio table, and so now we'll probably want a history table. And so that history table can keep track of the current date, as well as the particular stock symbol, as well as how many shares, and then whether what, at, what action it is. So whether you were buying those shares or whether you were selling them. So then to deal with date, then there are a couple of ways you can do this. PHP has a way of keeping track of date, which you can look up yourself. But then in SQL, you can also use either now or current timestamps. So that's up to you. But just make sure that basically every time a user buys or sells, instead of up, you'll be updating their cash in the users table, you'll be updating the rows in the portfolios table, then you'll also be updating the history. So there are going to be three separate SQL queries that you'll be calling there. All right, so we have a bunch of functionality now. Just a couple of reminders is that in your index file, you'll want to link to at least your, but you'll want to allow a user to like link to the buy.php page, right? So that's going to, uh, allow a user and buy.php is the controller so that's going to either send you to that's going to send you to the like form that allows you to look 
things up. We have history, we have um, logging out, getting a quote, and then selling. So those are at minimum what you want to show. In terms of the portfolio, the portfolio is actually shown in the index page. So if we go to index, here we see that it renders portfolio.php and passes in the associative rate, basically the title equals portfolio. So this is the controller. If we go to the template of portfolio.php, then all it has is displays basically a picture that says, oh, it's under, this site is under construction. But later on, once you pass in, you'll be passing in basically more specific information instead of just the title, you'll probably be passing in more things in. And then once you have those values, then portfolio.php can deal with those values in printing them out in a certain order. All right. So then once you've implemented all of those, then you also need to implement one more feature. So this can either be allowing a user to change their password, to reset their password if they've forgotten it. So for the password reset, then you'll probably also want to edit register such that it allows them to specify an email. So if they forget their password, then they can um, get that, they can probably enter in their username and then an email will be sent to them with a link to be able to reset their password. You can have something that allows users to like get receipts every time they buy or sell something, and then finally um, allow them to add cash to their website. Now, just to go back into the concept of controllers and templates a little bit. So you'll have something like a, so you'll have a controller here. Right now we're looking at the login.php example. When we have a controller, basically it's going to take two cases. When we have controllers, we're in this piece that we're also kind of dealing with when we have forms as well. So the controller will basically have um, separate actions. One, if a form has already been submitted. And then two, if the user is coming to that page for the first time and still needs to input that form. I'm going to jump to that case first before going up to the first case of having the form in. So here we say, well, if basically if the form has been submitted with the method post, don't worry about that a bit, don't worry about that too much, but understand that basically this function deals with whether a form has been submitted or not. So this condition is true if a user has submitted the form. If not, If not, then we're going to want to call render loginform.php and then pass in the title. This title is just basically going to appear in the header. But what this does is basically says, OK, well, if a user goes to login.php and hasn't actually logged in, then I want to send them to the page that has that form, which allows them to input the username and the password. Then I go to login form, and then that has the actual form. Then, once the user submits that form, they're going to submit it to login.php with the method post. So then, I'm actually going to enter this section of my if-else loop. So then it's in here that we deal with the values entered in into the, into the form. It's here that we deal with those. Then, say, once you deal with those values, if you're dealing with, um, say, say we're dealing with like the quote.php page where someone can input a stock that they want to look up and then see that display, we'll want, that's kind of similar here. So here we have a login form. We'd probably have like a quote form. But then once the user has actually submitted that information, then you'll want the controller to basically pass into another template that will show them that actual information. So then right around here, then you'll probably, around, around the end of your, of your um, condition here, the if the method equals post, then you'll probably want to render another page, the like show quote, which sends you to that page, showquote.php, 
and then in that file we'll reference those values. Does that make sense? Right. So we have a controller that basically deals with the two cases, whether you've entered a form in or not. If you haven't entered a form, then it'll redirect you to that form, which will then put you back to that page. And then once you've had information, then the controller in that body will deal with that information as necessary. So either looking up values for the stock, and then once it's looked up those values and has them in a nicely formatted array, then can pass that array into the template page that deals with outputting that information. All right. Again, since it's web, it's going to be fun. We're outside of C, so we're not limited to the, like, the ASCII and that terminal output. So have fun with this. We have, like, it's, um, you can make it as visual as you want. You can um, allow users to input, like, like, millions of dollars at a time or limit them and be really mean and allow them only to enter one penny at a time or something like that. So be definitely be sure to have fun with this. Um, PHP code is a bit simpler in that it's a bit easier. Um, it's a bit easier to kind of map out your pseudocode into into the actual implement implementation. So definitely have fun with this because it is actually our last piece at NCS50. With that, this was walkthrough seven. Once you're finished watching the walkthrough and finish your P-set, then these were also P-sets. And now we are on to the final project after we get through quiz one. But then hopefully you can use the tools that you've learned from the P-sets. Not only the syntax, but more the abstract notion of how to like take a certain, f like say, okay, I want to do this, and then actually implementing that. Learning how to struggle through syntax and distribution code, reading other people's code, and then um, kind of interpreting that using pre-existing functions. So good luck with the last P-set. It's been a pleasure to lead the walkthroughs. I hope they've been helpful for you. These were walkthroughs, and thanks very much. <laughs>